What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today we're going to be checking out some new arrivals at DLT Trading. It's actually been over a month since I've done this, which is hard to believe, but I can't wait to see what we've got going on. Uh, as per usual, I will link the new arrivals page and the drops page, the uh, restocks page. It'll all be linked down in the description. So if you want to check this out by yourself and you don't want to hear me talk, that's fine. Those links are down there. If you do want to hear my commentary and see what we've got going on here visually uh, with me today, then stick around. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and start here. Castillo Tagus River Blue. I have no idea what these are. These are apparently DLT trading exclusives. They're not that expensive. Yeah, just not super familiar with them. Bunch of new Olight Warrior Mini 3s, um, or at least some. Um, there's a bunch of new flashlights. That's what I noticed. Uh, these attention to detail MK2 smalls are now available. These are US made. Again, I'm still really wanting to be proven wrong about some of these. I feel like maybe I handled some that weren't exactly perfect. So I'm, I'm kind of holding out and hoping that I get a different report. Uh, more people having handled them and saying, no, you just had a weird one, right? Um, I kind of like how that one looks there. Uh, we've got these LT Ride Frontier Valleys. Are these actually out of stock? Or are they coming soon? See, I, I I know so little about fixed blades and what people prefer that I, I can't I, I don't know what people like to buy. Apparently these apparently these uh, LT rights are incredibly popular. I'm just not that integrated in the world of fixed blades. Still some LT right stuff hanging around. Tops Mini Scandi L Max MSFG Green G10. What is this? Hmm. It doesn't look like a bad knife at all. Not a bad price either. USA, really? Okay. Hmm. All right. Uh, people ask me all the time about my opinion on Topps knives. And again, I'm not super familiar. Um, but I mean, Scandi Grind, USA made, 160 bucks, and LMAX, right? Um, certainly doesn't seem like a bad price, at least on paper. Uh, moving on here, the Kershaw Dividend and Magna Cut. Uh, this is something that I highlighted on the community tab. This is a USA made knife. It is uh, speed safe or assisted, but still 140 bucks USA made and Magna Cut. Uh, that's kind of a hard deal to beat, especially um, considering the dividend is absolutely, I would call it a flagship Kershaw model. Um, so if you're interested in that or you didn't know it existed and you, you like the Kershaw USA stuff, um, that's one to consider. Another one that I am shocked is hanging around is the Protec Godson in the Sapphire Blue. Um, this picture does not do this justice. It is not a flat or dark blue. It is super reflective. Anybody who actually has one, I own one of these. I own the Godfather, the longer one in the Sapphire. Uh, I think it's actually a PVD, I think. I don't know if they say exactly what it is. Uh, this is an incredibly impressive finish. Um, 240 bucks, USA Auto has the, uh, the, the pearl inlay there or the abalone or whatever you call that. Uh, yeah, definitely uh, one that's worth picking up. Those sapphire blue, those are some of the most sought after uh, uh, variants of ProTech knives that are out there. So that's definitely one that I'd pick up. These are new exclusives um, for the mat, like the, the, the they're DLT trading exclusives um, that are the, the Tactile Maverick. So they're in carbon fiber instead of titanium. I'm not really a big fan of the Nebula stuff, um, but the Purple Haze is pretty cool. So if you like the idea of the Maverick, but maybe the titanium one is just isn't your jam, they have those in um, a couple of different forms of carbon fiber, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's a Microtech LUDT. I'm, I'm really glad that we're finally, there's actually a purple one here that's a, a uh, plain edge. I'm really glad that we're finally seeing the LUDT again. This is not the first time I've actually seen these things stocked. It's usually, it, it had been for a long time, the only time I ever saw one sitting around, it was in a serrated edge, uh, but now we're seeing plain edge versions uh, versions sitting around. Um, still a lot of the um, Sith Lord and Jedi uh, full serrated or partially serrated um, ultra text hanging around. Wouldn't surprise me at all if we find one that is non uh, serrated. Uh, we have, this is an interesting one, the Warhound with the uh, clear, I don't know what sort of injection mold plastic they're using for that, but that's definitely not one that I see all the time. There's also a bunch of new Olamet Cutlery buskers in various types of carbon fiber. Um, this is like camo copper fat carbon, for example, or Mars Valley, I guess. Some of these actually look pretty cool. If you're a bigger fan of having, uh, you know, at least one piece of carbon fiber on some of these knives, these are US made, by the way. 
Um, let's just pop in here and take a look at, this is Magna Cut. You take a look here. Magna Cut, Sheep's Foot, or at least is that is that what they call it? It says Blade Style is Semper, yeah. USA made 2.99 ounces. We have uh, whatever they're calling this um, uh, material on the front, some type of um, marble carbon fiber or fat carbon, right? But we have the black titanium on one side and we have a Magna Cut blade. Um, definitely one of the cooler, smaller, uh, sort of mid-tech USAs that are out there. So that uh, black and white one, that doesn't surprise me that that one's gone. We still have Kodiaks in stock. So I have, um, I have a Kodiak here. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, the Kodiak is like the Alpha Beast, but in a configuration that actually works for carry. Um, the blade is nowhere near as thick. I mean, it's still thick. I mean, let's get this let's get this clear. This is still 190 thousandths, but instead of D2, it's M390, uh, and then we have thinner slabs of titanium. But it's still a huge knife. Uh, it's almost nine and a quarter inches. Um, and then we have a nearly 10 ounce knife. So for people who like to carry like larger overbuilt knives, um, but just, you know, maybe you've looked at the Alpha Beast and you're like, yeah, I like big thick knives, uh, but I, I can't justify carrying a knife with a nearly half an inch, uh, you know, of thickness in the blade. The Kodiak might be for you. It is a very large, impressive, um, you know, frame lock. Uh, the one here, actually, I have finished the review on it and it's pretty much exactly what you think. It's, it's a lot like what I said. It's just huge, but it's it's much more in the realm of reasonable versus the uh, it, it's brother it's brother being the um, the PMP uh, Alpha Beast. No surprise there that the Midgard's Messer Little Beowulf is sold out. I made a post about that saying these are definitely going to sell out. So pick these up when you can. The Giant Mouse Ace Rio definitely looks interesting. I really like the profile of that one. Is this a larger one? Hold on. I'm going to be bummed out if it's a little tiny thing. Yeah, it's eight inches. Okay. Yeah. Um, that actually looks really nice. Is it, what do we got here? That's yeah, Magna Cut too. Everybody jumping on that Magna Cut train. What do we have here for the scale material? That's G10. Eh, I am interested. That's, that's a really nice looking profile. It's one of the more attractive profiles that I've seen um, from Giant Mouse here uh, lately. The short and fat little things, it, it, it works sometimes, um, but uh, that's that's a better looking giant mouse than I've seen. Ace Nimbus V3 is also one that I enjoyed looking at, at least. Whole bunch of TFF1 fat daddies and CPM3V, uh, blah, blah, blah. There's always new Medfords. There's just constantly, constantly new Medfords on DLT trading. It's like every day, there's just a pile of Medfords that hang around. If you're going to pick one up, in my opinion, you should pick up one of the S90V variants. That's just my opinion. Slim middies. Those are probably some of the most carryable Medfords. If you've never seen, it's not a mini, it's a midi. So these are still almost eight inches. They really should show them um, from the side because I think these are 125 thousandths. Yeah, which a lot of people is, you know, to a lot of people, it's just absolutely unheard of for Medford, but those have much more reasonable blade stocks. In fact, it's totally reasonable blade stock thickness for general EDC. And uh, the, the Marauder profile is probably one of the most EDC friendly in their lineup. So if you can get one of those in S90V, uh, you know, not a bad purchase at all. Uh, no surprise there that the recent drops of Herman knives are gone. Um, really happy to see that DLT trading has picked up Herman knives. If you're trying to pick up a Herman knife, there's something that you're looking for, right? And, you know, you keep refreshing Polish Custom Knives, which is also a great place. That was originally ex the only way, uh, way that you could get your hands on a Herman knife. Um, if you just keep refreshing and they don't drop the stuff that you want, it's nice that at least one other retailer right now is trying to stock them. I would venture to guess that we will see many, many more Herman knives. It seems like they are, you know, as they've increased in popularity, they are taking that money and pumping it right back into production. Um, which is good. That's what that's what we want to see. So I would imagine that we will see a, a lot more uh, Herman knives. It won't surprise me if we start to see them at other retailers. But for right now, expect to see them. I would say at least once a month at DLT Trading. That's just a guess. I don't know that. Terzuola ATCF and black uh, white storm fat carbons. Kind of cool. The blue PT plus. These are fun. Every time I see them, I just think, why? Well, I just make the big ones again, right? I mean, I'm, I'm biased. Clearly, I, I want, I, I just want a larger version. I mean, these are still really good knives and not a bad price at all, right? 
Uh, no surprise there that the Blue Sapphire Malibu is gone. We have the Operator Series uh, ATCF sitting there. Still don't know exactly why they want like double every other ProTech. Um, like if they wanted 300 uh, or 325 bucks for this thing, I would pick one up. It's just really hard for me to be like, yeah, uh, $560. Like, mm, I don't think so. Still cool though. Bunch of Praetorian T's and S35VN. Those S35VN variants are gonna sit there for a while. I mean, it's still a good steal, but it's like people are gonna pick up the S45s, the 3Vs and the S90Vs, I think probably quite a bit faster. If you're looking for a Praetorian T, there's a ton of these things here right now. And a lot of them are, um, uh, uh, what, what am I trying to say here? Uh, a lot of them are in S90V is what I started to say. I was also going to say, if you don't know what the, the difference between all the versions, the T is the full size, full length variant. It's just not the absolute full thickness. The full thickness is the tie. And those are the ones that regularly run like 1500 to $2,000. So these are still plenty thick at 190 thousandths. So you're still definitely getting a monstrous beefy boy. It's just not, you know, borderline uncarryable. I mean, it still is right. Rockstead shoe. This knife would be, let me tell you, let me, let's talk about this. This knife would be much more interesting to me if two things, obviously one thing, if the price was less, right? I mean, it's a Rockstead. That's what they're going to, that's what they're going to go for. Number one, I, it really shocks me. It's only about seven and a half inches long. Number two, if you like koi fish, that's fine. Can they, why don't they make a version that doesn't have fish all over it? Like, I I just, it's like, why is that the only version they make? Just make one where it's just plain, right? It's just very confusing. Sometimes the choices that Rockstead makes, like the exclusive choices that they make. Griffin Scout, 2.5, don't know what that is. Moving on here. Uh, the Nicholas Nichols Guppy. This is a really popular, uh, like the Guppy folder is one that people have brought up to me multiple times. I don't know a whole lot about it, but this is apparently a popular knife. I, mean, I don't know if people know that these things are sitting there. Where are these made? Hold on. Let's find out. Seven and a quarter. They're made in the USA. That's what I thought. I think these are probably mid tech. So there you go. If you're trying to pick one of these up or you didn't know they were sitting there, they're sitting there. Still kind of want to hatch it. Oh, of course, the VECP button lock. I, I want one of these, and I, I think you guys know I tried to get one. I let everybody know they were coming, so I had to compete with everybody, and I lost. You guys won. Congratulations. That's just how it works. <laughs> Even if I hadn't informed everybody, I am certain that I still wouldn't have got my hands on them. The S90V Teal PM2 is still available. That would, if you have never handled a PM2, and you're just like, I want one, but I want something weird. I want something special. There you go. S90V and Teal, that's pretty awesome. Uh, Spyderco does an excellent job heat treating their blades. And I think S90V on the PM2 uh, Pelican face blade is probably the way to go. Definitely. Spartan Blades K-Bar in Magna Cut. That is definitely the coolest K-Bar that I have ever seen. Um, I think those uh, FDE variants are probably what I would go with. So there you go. Uh, it is uh, no longer uh, a totally unreasonable thing to me to spend, um, you know, a lot of money on a fixed blade. Uh, I've definitely done it. So expect to see something like that, I guess, in the future. Uh, I think we might actually be all the way back into the pages that um, I was in the last time I looked. So the next thing I want to do is look at the drops real quick. I don't know why they still have these up here. These are long gone. Famine, some fixed blades. These are in stock. I don't know what this is. Okay, so that's it for the drops page. And then the last thing I want to do is look at the restocks real quick, just because it's always a good one. Holy crap, are you kidding me? Man, that is tempting to buy that right now. That is that is super tempting. I had no idea the glycons just sitting there in the perfect configuration. Oh, why are you doing this to me? Man, I'm super tempted. There's a good chance I'm going to buy this thing the moment I get done with this video. This is why. This is why we check the restocks page. This this is such an underutilized page. It, it's a miracle that the Glycon is just sitting there right now. That is probably the coolest USA OTF on the market. 
Not a little guy either. This is close to nine inches. 8.9 inches. Oh my gosh, that is so freaking tempting. You might find out next week that I bought a Glycon. SBR uh, sitting there. Let's see, what else we got? What else we got? Another LEDT in black. Spyderco Manix 2 Lightweight. The green Delica is back. And it looks like that's about it. That's all they got on their restocks page. Okay. Pretty interesting. Lot, there's plenty of stuff at DLT Trading. If you don't regularly check DLT Trading, you definitely should. Uh, absolutely. Um, but uh, it looks like... What is this? Ready up with Spyderco. Hold on. Oh, they made it sound like they had some weird stuff sitting around. Okay. We all know there's new Spider Coast coming. I wish they were more interesting. Right? They got some interesting stuff, but I'm still waiting on Spider Co to like do some more interesting stuff. I don't know what slowed them down there so much for so long. I mean, it made sense a while back, but now it's like, why are you guys moving so slow? Anyways, that's going to be pretty much it for today's episode. Like I said, all of this stuff will be linked down at all the different pages will be linked down in the description if you guys want to check something out. It definitely helps my channel when you use those links, but again, that's up to you. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.